Welcome to the Framework for Conducting Lifecycle Analysis of Data Centers session. Our speaker is Christoph Garnier from Schneider Electric, a member of the MIA Technical Work Group. Hello. Hello, you hear, you hear me? Perfect, thanks. So, welcome uh, everybody to this uh, first session. My name is uh, Christophe Garnier. I'm working for Schneider Electric in, um, in France. And my um, main activity is working on uh, standardization and uh, environmental groups in EU and worldwide. So I'm pretty familiar with uh, all the environmental aspects you can find on products and, uh, and big systems. Uh, going from the product level to the more uh, complex systems. And uh, uh, pretty good um, knowledge of what's all about recycling, uh, substances, and life cycle analysis. And I joined the, the Green Grid three or, three or four years ago, and that was the, the, the very beginning of, uh, of all this activity in, uh, in, in the Green Grid. And there was a lot of things around green or sustainable or environmental. And um, that was addressed by people coming from the uh, data center industry and me coming from the uh, standardization um, activities. I thought that I could bring th something to this, uh, to this group by giving more uh, formal rules and uh, standards already in place in different areas, worldwide, European, and so on. So that's why I started uh, this work a um, couple of years ago on um, data center life cycle analysis. And it has been published uh, end of last year. So it's the, the white paper number 45. And uh, so we'll present this, uh, not the white paper, but some slides to, to describe what's in the white paper. And uh, we have this presentation. And after this presentation, during the break, there will be a round table and I will attend, uh, I will host a, a round table on this subject. So uh, please feel free to, to join during the break. I think you can bring your plates and we can uh, have a drink and talk and eat together. So feel free to continue the discussion after this, uh, this session. So that's what's in the, in the paper. So a short word on, on what's, uh, what's the objective. Uh, a small word on, on the difference I see and people see between sustainability and environment. And I think it's important to, to, uh, to clarify this. And some of the main principles of uh, life cycle assessment. Then the trends and the limitation of the exercise what lessons we, we got from this, and what could be next. And there is a, a, a polling system. So uh, in, my, uh, uh, in the agenda, if you look at my presentation, there is one question at the end of what could be the next work after this, uh, this paper. The objective of this work is not to calculate numbers. For sure, today, I think it's too early to give complete numbers, and uh, it's even more difficult to just have one number to tell how sustainable or environmentally friendly or green or whatever is a, a data center. So the, the goal of this document is not at all to give numbers. Numbers are provided by people like eBay. So they did a very good job. And they define how to calculate their own number. They define the rules. And then they can compare themselves towards themselves. As soon as, as they, uh, they, uh, they follow the main principle that I will describe here, we can say that it's a, it's a very good as assessment. So I have not the pretension and the, the possibility even to, to give numbers, but to give the framework. It's also, this document is also not a list of best practices. Best practices, you have documents in EU, like the Code of Conduct. You have other standardization of organization, like HC, working on that. If you need information, I can provide that. The, the intent of this paper is also not to give best practices. It's, again, to give the frameworks and the main rules. And also provide the viewpoints of the professional you are here in the room and uh, other professional I met. 
And at the end, as I said, there is the, the, this polling system. So you can, we can discuss and again at the, the round table during, during the break time to, uh, to see what can, be, what can be done next. First, I'm coming from this standardization organization where a word is pretty defined. And I have some issues with the, the usage of uh, this word sustainability. So if you look at the real definition of sustainability, it's, it has been given uh, in a report uh, 20 years ago, something like that. And it's really the intersection of the, what they call the three pillars. So it's environment, economical issues, and social issues. So when you talk of sustainable or sustainability, you should address the three pillars. And in most of the cases, we are looking at environment and sometimes even a, a smaller part of environment. So addressing all of these is really what we call sustainability. And that's what the companies have to report in their uh, corporate social responsibility reports and so on. And you have to address all of this. So my presentation does not intend to cover all of this uh, spectrum, but only focus on the environmental aspects. Maybe we can extend after that the work to uh, other, other topics, but that's, uh, that's another discussion. So I will talk of environment and not sustainability. And if you hear me talking of sustainability in that case, it's just focus on, on this side. And I don't know if you can read from, from the back, but they, they're given a work. So if you have a, a system or a data center or whatever uh, that match the social and the environmental aspect, you call it bearable. If it's economic and social, you call it equitable. And if it's environmental and economic, you call it viable. And if you are in the middle, you match all the three criteria, you are sustainable. So that's the real definition of these terms. So sometimes it's used uh, not exactly for, the, for this meaning, but in my presentation, I will be, uh, I will be uh, just, fo I would just focus on the environmental section. And sometimes you, you hear people talking of sustainable, but they're just, they are just in, a, in the environmental group. From uh, a, world, a world view on what are the main standardization organizations. You have three main bodies yeah. working of standards in the world. You have the IC, working on electric and electronic products. That's the industry where you find most of the components of your data center. There is uh, another one called ITU at the world level, and they work on all the uh, telecommunication equipment. Both of them are now, I would say, overlapping because ITU consider that anything you can find on a, on a telecommunication network is part of ITU. So because the data center is part of a telecommunication network, ITU considers that data centers are part of, the, of their activity. So there are some overlap, but uh, there are also some work committees and uh, it's doing pretty well for the moment. The other big organization is ISO, and ISO is working more on developing um, standards for systems. For instance, if you are certified 14001, that means you're, you have an environmental system in your company. It's not dealing on product, it's more dealing on, on organization. And all of these big, uh, uh, there is another one called ASHRAE for the cooling system, but it's not really a, a, standard, a world standard organization. So, uh, and all these big organizations have technical committee focused for that. So TC111 is the one for IC, a member of this group, and that's where we developed standards on, on calculating the recycling rates, the declaration of substances in, uh, in electric products, and uh, that's where also a standard on greenhouse gas emission is developed. There is uh, SG5 for ITU, and they also develop standards on, uh, on green greenhouse gas and, uh, and data centers. And ISO, that's the Technical Committee 207. As John mentioned before, there is a, a big joint committee between IC and ISO called JTC1. And this big committee has a subcommittee 39 dealing on data center metrics. And that's where uh, Green Grid is bringing the, the, the work done in the last uh, past uh, two, three, four, five years to this standardiz standardization organization to bring them 
at this uh, world level with, a, 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 I would say, a standardization stamp on the document. So it's actually in, uh, currently in, pro in progress. Uh, the, the committee started a year ago, so the um, PUE is starting to be uh, standardized and other works are in progress in, uh, in this committee. So I'm a member also of this group. If you want to know more, I will be uh, available during the, the break for that. So that's the, an overview of the uh, uh, World uh, Standardization Organization and where we are uh, concerned in, uh, in this data center world. If you look at how to assess the environmental aspects of a, a, an organization, a data center, or a product, there are many, many different approaches to, uh, to look at a data center. Because data center is not a, a product by itself. It's a sum of products. It's, kind of, it's similar to an organization. So it's in, in the middle of many, many things. And if you look at the different ways of approaching environmental uh, impacts of a product or uh, an organization, you can, you can have uh, methodologies working on uh, working on a single impact. For instance, you have, if you know that, I think, the GHG protocol. They are just assessing the, uh, the, the carbon footprint of a company, an organization, or a product. And they, they develop a specific data center chapter. But that's only for one impact, greenhouse gas. You also have documents like ISO, which is the document of reference for making life cycle assessment. They consider all the life cycle and all the impact, but they are not focused to a specific product. That's the generic uh, rules for making life cycle assessments. So this ISO document can uh, be used to assess the environmental, uh, the life cycle assessment of a, whatever, a banana, a data center, a chair, or a car, or whatever. You also have documents addressing this uh, life cycle assessment. Most of the time, only the use phase is considered. So uh, when the product is in use. And sometimes the, 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 the manufacturing and the end of life is not part of the scope. Other, other times, you also have some embedded phases. For instance, use and manufacturing, the, the embedded carbon is included. So that's another way of approaching. And you should also pay attention to that. The scope, some studies have a very broad scope. ISO 14040, which is the reference document, supposed to be applicable to anything. But some of the, as I said before, are focused to data center. Some are focused to electric products, other to um, organization. So the scope may be different. Also, the geographical scope is different. And when you talk of environmental assessment, of course, you have the, the energy, which is different in the different countries. Uh, and that's, that has an impact. So you have, as I presented in the slide before, world uh, documents, like ISO, ICIT, should be applicable worldwide, but you also have documents developed in Europe. So you have Europe-specific rules inside the methodology. You also have countries developing their own standards. There is one in Singapore on uh, energy efficiency of data center. There is a specific standard for data center in place in, uh, in Singapore. It's based on uh, ISO standard. So geographical area is also different. And the data center is a very strange animal because it can be considered in these studies either as a product, a sum of really physical equipment, or it can be considered as a service. Like eBay is providing uh, uh, sales uh, and, and, and so on. So it can, be, it can be addressed by different type of methodology. Some of the standards are focused on the reduction. So you have in ISO and uh, in ITU and uh, IEC documents uh, that help you calculate the reduction from one base uh, state to uh, a new product or implementation of a new technology, and which is, which is an, an also another way of approaching. And sometimes it's developed by standards uh, organization or consortia, like Green Grid or ASHRAE. So a single slide to tell you that the world 
of uh, methodology and tools that you can use to uh, assess environmental impact of a data center is very, very broad. And it's a moving world. Now, today, it's, uh, you, you have studied everywhere. You have uh, documents published by many, many organizations, either for one product, one phase, one impact, and so on. So it's a very, very complex world. And as a user, I think that for the moment, there is no one single methodology that you can say, I will use this one, and that's the real one. So the intent of my, my work is to move in the middle of all of this and highlight what are the main important points to consider when you make a life cycle assessment of a data center. And then whatever the methodology you use, if you follow these rules, you will be, uh, I would say, compliant with uh, all of them. Two main points to consider when you, you, you make a life cycle assessment. If you want to make something credible and uh, that cannot be discussed by any organization, you have to follow this and this one. The first one is to have a, a complete view of your product or system or whatever. Complete view, I mean the complete life cycle from manufacturing to end of life and all the impacts. But pay attention, I don't say that all these boxes inside this table have the same importance. So for sure, for a data center, the energy in the use phase is obviously one of the most important. But if you just work on this one and do not say anything about the other one, that's not the way to do a life cycle assessment. Even if you say, uh, I, I consider this one, this one, and this one neglectable, that's fine. Then you focus on the other one. Because obviously, you don't have to spend time on reducing uh, the impact on air during, uh, during transport, if there is none, or, or whatever. But having a complete view of the complete life cycle and the complete, the complete list of environmental impacts, that's key. If you don't do that, you cannot pretend having a, a, a complete life cycle assessment. And as I said, you don't have to spend time and energy and dollars on all the boxes. But at least say that you, you, you assessed everything, and then you consider that this one is neglectable, and you just focus on a couple of them. But if you don't do that, you cannot say you, you are in, a, in, a, in an environmental uh, methodology uh, official. The second aspect is really to pay attention on what you, what you are doing. If you, if you are reducing something somewhere, most of the time, unfortunately, you increase something else. If you optimize something, most of the time, there is a side effect on another impact. And if you focus just on what's the improvement without telling that it may uh, get other impact worse, then you, I don't say you are, you are lying, but you may hide something that makes your study less uh, complete and not, uh, not very credible. So th those two main things, having a complete life cycle assessment of all the, the different stages, and we will see that for the data center, it's not, it's not very clear. And all the impacts and pay attention to the, uh, the trade-off. When you improve something, maybe you worsen another one. That's the two main key elements that you have to, uh, to, uh, to carry on during all, all your study. So that said, if you follow these two rules and you, you apply these four uh, principles on top of that, you are very close to something clean and, uh, and good. Uh, we will, I will describe this uh, in the coming slides. The four main criteria, it's based on the ISO uh, document. The four main criteria are defining the boundaries of your system. And we will see that for a data center, it's not an easy one. Defining the functional unit. And that's exactly what eBay was talking about before. I will, uh, I will tell you that. Uh, the complete life cycle also and all the impacts. So uh, we will spend a couple of slides on uh, each of them. 
So the system boundaries, if you make a life cycle assessment of uh, this clock, that's very easy. The system boundaries are here, it's easy. If you do the life cycle assessment of a data center, the question of where you draw the border of your system is not as clear as this. So there is, again, I, I do not want to tell that you have to do this or that, but you have to define what are the boundaries of your system. I don't want to tell you that you have to include this element or not. It's your decision. But if you decide this, you must keep this decision all along your process, and you have to clearly explain it to the users or readers of your, of your study. If you, if you don't want to consider something in your data center, no problem. But just say it and show it. And as we can see, there is no unique definition of a data center. So in Europe, there is a coordination group that published a definition based on ITU, uh, ISO, and so on. So we are trying to, to find a way of formalizing and giving a definition of a data center, but it's, it's, a, complex, it's a complex equipment. Uh, I see that in the standardization committees. Even having a definition of a, a, a UPS, it's not an easy, an easy work. Because sometimes a UPS is in the middle of a transformer with, without batteries and so on. So it's, even for a simple product, it's not easy to give a definition. So when it comes to a data center, it's really, really complex. So there is no definition, but that's not a problem. You just have to say what you include and what you exclude. And that's mandatory to, uh, to, to, to measure your, your progress from one year to another, one uh, system to another. And if the data center is not on its own, but part of a building or something else, just describe how you use the ratio to isolate your data center from the whole building. So again, the border is not clear, but it's not a problem as long as you specify where, what you include and what you exclude. As an example, some question. If you, if you, uh, if you have a data center, do you consider the lift in the data center, part of your data center? I almost never hear about fire system in the data center. There is a lot of pipes, there is a lot of liquids, a lot of uh, uh, equipment, and that's an environmental impact because you have uh, uh, hazardous substances, you have equipment, uh, it costs energy, it uh, must be run, maintained, and so on. So there is a real impact, and that must be part of the study. If you don't want to include it in your study, just say it. But do not pretend having a complete life cycle assessment if you ignore something. It's not an issue of ignoring it, but just specify it. If you, if you need roads to, to access your data center, I mean, that's when you have a, a product, if there is nothing before and there is a clock after, it's clear. But if you have a data center now and before you have nothing, a forest or a countryside or whatever, and you need to build roads to access your data center, then roads should be part of your data center. That is the, that's part of the impact of the data center. Without the data center, the road wouldn't exist. So that's the type of question you have to, to ask yourself and, uh, and, and say that if you include it or not. If you have several data centers connected through uh, I don't know, submarine cables, you include that. Are the offices of the employees part of the data center? My point is yes. If you have no employees, you have no data center. And before the data center, you didn't have these people. So they, they, they should be included in the scope of your data center. And especially if you extend the scope to sustainability with all the uh, 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 financial and, and social impact, in that case, it's mandatory to include it. But if you, if you focus on environment, that's up to you. But that's a question to ask yourself. Of course, lightning inside the data center, but also outside if you have parking lots. Parking lots are part of your data center. So there is lightning, there is road, there are uh, water usage, and so on. Included also the, the uh, PV panels. If you, if you count uh, uh, solar energy, as renewable energy in your, in your assessment, 
then somewhere the impact of manufacturing this panel, installing them, maintaining, and so on, should appear someone, somewhere in, in your presentation. That's typically this case. If you, if you, if you reduce the, uh, if you reduce the energy consumption by adding solar panels, because you have you generate your own energy, then somewhere you have an increase of raw material consumption, hazardous substance, and so on. So that's. That's really a key, a key point. That was for the, the boundaries. The second big point is to define what you're measuring. Again, if you look at this clock, the functional unit, that's a, a term used by uh, 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 standardization people in environment. So it's not something you use uh, very often, but it's really what you, what you measure. If you have this clock, the functional unit is something able to give you time, uh, alarm, and snooze. And being this size, and so on. You give the characteristics of the function you want. The data center, the functional unit, is what your data center is for. And again, in eBay, that was clearly defined. The functional unit is to uh, sell and buy product. And how many products, how many sales per year, and so on, that's easy to measure. And if you don't do that, you can, you can have the same data center, physical data center, but if one year, from one year to another, let's say you have less activity, you think you measure the same thing, the same physical building or data center, but in fact, the functional unit is not the same because if you have less activity, you define your functional unit for a bank has as many transactions per, per year or whatever. If you have less transaction, then of course your environmental impact will be better. But the functional unit will not be the same. So it's not the border that are changing. It's what the work done by your data center. And that's a key issue uh, when you talk of uh, environment and sustainability. The border is something, but the functional unit is another. And that's very important to define that. And there are many works in the green grid trying to identify uh, the, 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 the num number of transactions per second, uh, the, the, I don't know if it's a, a mailing uh, system, the number of mails exchanged per year or per second or whatever. So that's very important to try to define this. Otherwise, there can be wrong numbers. Uh, most of the time, it's a, a computing. So but computing for eBay was uh, buy and sell. For a bank, it's number of transactions or, or whatever. And if you don't do that, you, you will have issues. The, the, the reliability of the data center is part of the functional unit. It's not a boundary. It's part of the functional unit. It's to deliver this type of function. And um, also, the lifetime of a data center is important. That's something I do not really uh, hear very often. But if you, if you create a data center, I mean, you build a, a, a building, because for me, the building is part of the data center. If it's a building supposed to live 10 years, it's much more different than 20 years. The impact divided by 20 is not the same as divided by 10. So part of the functional unit is also the expected lifetime of your product, and in that case, the data center. That was the, the, the second point. The third one, the life cycle. That's what I explained in the, in, in the first slide. That's very, very important to consider the complete life cycle. And their work already uh, starting in the green grid. We had a new, uh, a new KPI for measuring the uh, end of life uh, of equipment. There is a ratio about the, the equipment sent to uh, uh, recycling companies versus the total amount of, 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 of equipment. And that's important to look at the complete life cycle. And in that case, the difficulty is to, when you, you have this, again, my uh, clock, if you have this clock, the raw material, it's very easy to identify what you have inside this. 
Manufacturing, it's very easy also to see a manufacturing plant. You put together the chip, the screen and everything and you have your manufacturing process. Transportation, easy, you put that on boxes, on pallets, stand on trucks, planes or whatever. Use, you use it. And end of life, in that case, most of the time you trash it. So it's clear. When it comes to a data center, it's much, much less easy to identify what you put in these different phases. First, you have the inside of the, of the, the data center, you have the IT equipment, you have the cooling, the power and everything, so that's equipment, but you also have the building itself. So the raw material can be IT equipment, but it can so also be concrete and glasses for the windows and stuff like that. And that's much more complex than for a, a single product like this. Manufacturing, again, manufacturing, you can manufacture the, the, the product in a plant, the servers, they are manufactured in a plant and then br brought to, uh, to the data center. If you talk of manufacturing the building itself, it's on site and it's another phase, but it's also, there is also an impact of manufacturing and this manufacturing process, you have trucks, you have uh, all, all of the, the, these things. Transportation, again, it's, it's transportation of a product and, uh, and all the, the equipment and, and use. The other big difference here, the use phase is clear. It works, then it doesn't work, bye-bye. For data center, the use phase and the maintenance phase is very intricate, close to, together, because you can change part of the equipment, replace. The, the, there is no a clear beginning of life cycle of a use phase and a, a very clear end of use phase. The maintenance phase is very important. In that case, the maintenance phase is almost zero. For data center, the maintenance phase and use phase are very close together, and it's very difficult to identify if it's used, if it's maintenance, if it's new, if it's old, if how you end of life, end of life, you have so much change within the data center. So the, the end of life uh, occurs during the life of the data center. So it's difficult to, uh, to identify as clearly as for other products. That's, these two phases here are not as clear as with other products. The fourth main um, thing is comprehensiveness. So the complete life cycle and the complete impacts of the product. When I joined the Green Green uh, four years ago, uh, a data center was green if it was energy efficient during use, full stop. And Coming from other committees where we, have all the, we were used to have the complete picture, I was a bit surprised. But now, you can see that all these impacts are one by one addressed by the green grid. We have water, we have carbon footprint, we have waste, and I'm pretty sure that we will soon see most of the other ones entering the scope. And that's, that's also a key point. And that's very important, mainly for the second main uh, principle, which is uh, avoid trade-off. For instance, if you, uh, a very simple one, if you use water from the river, that's very good for water usage, because you can go almost to zero. You just use water from the river. But if you don't look at trade-off, you are missing something. Because if you use water from the river, you will send water 10 or 15, or I don't know how many degrees more in the river. And you will, you will have an impact on the environment. So that's a good thing for the data center to use fresh water. But when you reject it, there is an impact somewhere. So you have to consider this. And every time you do something, you have to look and think of what could be the other impact. Sometimes there is no other impact, great. But in other case, you have an impact. Um, that's what I was saying for solar panels. Of course, you, you minimize your, your energy consumption, but 
On the other side, you have more raw material, more maintenance, and so, and so on. Um, I don't hear much about packaging in the data center. When you see the amount of product and the amount of packaging needed by each product and the replacing, replacing rate, I think there is a, an impact. So when you refresh with new equipment, of course, your equipment is much more efficient, but you have something somewhere. Maybe it's neglectable, but it should be said. Um, if you move your data center to a neutral building, a carbon neutral building, that's great for your data center. But on the other hand, what's, what happened to the, to the previous data center? You cannot leave it here and just forget it. So there is also an impact, a trade-off of having a new one versus leaving the, the, the previous one. So that's all this uh, uh, shifting and trade-off that must be considered. And that's especially true when you, when you look at all the, uh, the impacts. When you try to minimize one, most of the time, if you're happy and uh, just, you just improve, other ones, or the, uh, uh, otherwise, uh, when you improve something, most of the time, another one is, is, less, uh, is less efficient. That works. I mean, we have methodologies. We have the tools, we can get the numbers, but there are limits. For the moment, we need really expert people. That's not an easy job to try to assess the carbon footprint of a product. The amount of data and work needed for that, that needs also a lot of resources, time and money to get data and compile everything. So that's one of the main limits of the system is the cost for the moment. I mean, the cost of entering the process. As soon as you enter the process, it's easier because you just have to refresh data and, uh, and update. But the data collection, if you have no data, you have no result. And moving to the uh, uh, digital age, it's easier because everything is, every data is somewhere. You just have to, to dig into this big amount of data. You don't have to, to, uh, to, to create something new. But you have to find, you have to find the, the data. And no data, no result, for sure. One of the big problems today is uncertainty. And that's, again, what, said, uh, what has been said by uh, eBay. The number they, they, uh, they have is their own numbers. They have their own way of calculating the, the, the data. When they have it, they use it. When they don't have, they assess or whatever. Uh, they, they, they aggregate them, the data, the way they want. So that's their own number. And the uncertainty, because if eBay is doing this and Google is doing the same dashboard, they will not have the same number because they will not uh, put together the data the same way. And this uncertainty is really, really, imp really important. Uh, that's why uh, today all the industry is saying that it's very difficult to use life cycle assessment as a tool to, to push regulation. It's, it's good as eBay is uh, uh, for things like eBay is doing, to compare yourself towards yourself, but you cannot use this type of, of, of uh, uh, methodology to, uh, to compare yourself towards a number for a regulation. Uh, historically, as I said, when I joined the Green Grid four years or five, four years ago, we were here. The data center was green if it was energy efficient during use. And little by little, we saw this table expanded towards either all the impact during use, so that's what we are looking at, water usage, carbon usage, whatever, and also trying to cover the same impact during all the phases. So having carbon during manufacturing of the equipment towards the end. So I think that we're moving from here. Today we are somewhere here. And what I expect is that tomorrow we will look at the complete picture, but we will identify what are the main boxes to focus on to reduce environmental impact. And I think that's the challenge of the coming years is to reach this stage. So DCMM, uh, data center battery model is doing a work uh, similar to this, and um, that will be the, the question at the end of, uh, of this presentation. Uh, I'm reaching the end. Of course, 
We are. We are the industry. And that's our role to define this. So it's time for us, because in all this fuzzy area of methodologies and so on, we don't have to let the standardization or governments or whatever decide for us. And I think it's time for us. We have the, the resource, we have the expertise for that, and define what are the rules for making environmental assessment of data center. And of course, that will give, uh, uh, harmonize the different methodology between different uh, industry, uh, users in the, in the industry, and of course, reduce incentive. And Greenwood is really in the middle of all of this. So that's really time for us to do that. Uh, on the polling tool, I put this question. So my study is done. And I think there are three, three options. The first one is to move to a second release of this data center lifecycle analysis, trying to define more precisely what are the boundaries and what could be the boundaries, define the usage scenarios, functional unit, give clarification of all the points you saw during my presentation. That would be a first, a first step towards what is called a product category rules. We can discuss this later on. The second is develop a second version of the data center, center maturity model, but including this work. And the third one would be create something new with the lessons from data center maturity model and the lessons from this, uh, from this work and develop a, a new work. Thanks for attending this. Uh, as I said, uh, I will um, host the, a round table during break, lunch time, and uh, you are welcome to uh, continue this discussion. Thanks. A, a, a very brief question I kind of want to ask the crowd. As I look around, I know many of you who are here, uh, and I know that there are many of you from different geographies around the world, and I might pick on Chris Hankin, who I see here in the second row from ITI, one of our partner organizations. Just kind of a show of hands. Christoph outlined what he's detecting. You remember seeing green grid in the center of that circle there? And he's outlined for you what he is seeing, what he's detecting because of his leadership in this space, activities coming out of the regulatory community that's now starting to look at the end of life. Now, we've been kind of in that middle zone for a while. And there's been certainly efforts around the front part of the zone, which is you've heard of Conflict Minerals, the Blood Minerals Act, you've heard of uh, different procurement practices. But kind of on a show of hands, how many folks, and I'm going to ask you to keep your hands up, how many folks have started to see some attention focused in the area of regulations and standards on the end of life of the data center and recyclability? About a quarter of the room. Now, of the folks who have their hands raised, can you kind of give me a sense, if you get hands up again, how many are from the United States? Drop your hands. Wow. That's interesting. So all the folks who've already detected this, as they've started to see this, are coming from the United States. Uh, Colette Maloney, who is here with us, she's actually in one of the other track sessions, uh, and she'll be joining us through a few different sessions as the Director General of essentially the Connect program in the EU. And we know that the EU is actively looking at this space as well. So it's something that I would really urge you to continue to support the efforts from the industry, some of the efforts that uh, Christoph and John Fluger from Dell and others in the organization have really been pushing around this issue. It is coming. We're in a great position to help make sense of it, so I would urge you to continue to pay attention and get involved in this level of work. Thanks again, Christoph. Thank you. Thank you.